Uh, welcome back. This uh, part of the video, I shall be making a crow quill float. Now, <laughs> a crow quill, in fact, uh, was probably one of the old type of methods or the old type of materials that they used to use uh, for float fishing many, many years ago. Obviously, before the latest technology of, uh, of all the latest materials, you know, balsas and uh, plastics and um, so on. Um, so crow quill being a natural uh, product from birds, um, they obviously uh, they fall off sometimes when they prune themselves or if you get a dead one. Uh, old anglers, they used to uh, strip them, uh, peel them off and they used to use them as, uh, as like a waggler. Sometimes they put a cork on them on the top to make like, a, like an Avon type of float. Um, but you know, over the last few years, uh, the trend has been um, they're coming back. Uh, more and more people are using them, uh, especially on canals, because they're very sensitive. Um, yeah, you can shot them right down to the very fine tips, and um, they're, they're a very good float. In fact, I've got an order for a couple now, uh, and I'll show you how to do them. It's quite easy. Okay, the first thing to do, you get your crow quill. Now they do come in various sizes from very small miniature ones up to very large ones and in some cases um, you have to take them from a, a bigger bird if you really want uh, you know larger uh, wagglers. Now I've got an order for a couple of 4BBs. Now the crow quill um, or crows uh, don't quite grow that big to, to, to actually give a, uh, a 4BB capacity um, float or you know for feather so um i've got this from some other bird uh, i can tell you what it is uh if if at a later date you want to subscribe to um my patreon channels which uh, i shall be launching shortly uh these are channels where i'll be indulging and going into depth into a lot of uh, um tips and a lot of secrets and a lot of things that um you, that are not quite uh, freely available let's put it that way um and i'm hoping to build up a, a subscription so that uh, on a monthly basis where i will be uh, producing perhaps one a week four a month videos on tips and uh, methods and uh, you know little secret things that uh, people don't give away in return uh, it should only be a couple of dollars um, a month but in return i shall be i'll be giving free things away i'll be giving free floats for example free uh, videos and free um ebooks all about fishing so uh, you know it'll be value for money anyway anyway let's crack on to this now the first thing i got the i got the, the, the feather the crow quill feather i call it crow quill it has to be stripped a couple of ways you can strip it one is by the hand by plucking it the other, you can burn it, burn it off, but that's, you know, you could damage it, cool itself. I find the easiest way is to use a very sharp blade initially. And, that, and what you do is, right, first of all, you score the feathers along. Let me put my glass on. <laughs> easier, easier. Anyway, what I do is follow the, the map of, of the, the feathers along and I start cutting away. Obviously, the sharper blade, the better. See, so now I'm starting to take the edge off, you see? Now, what I will be doing, I'll be sanding this down. Now, once I've gone one way, I'll then start to cut it even finer, right down to the quill itself. There you are. Okay, now we're getting there slowly. Straight down to the bottom. That's on the one side. Now we'll do the other. It, you know, it's just a matter of bit of elbow grease, really, to get out. Be careful you don't cut it too fine because you'll cut into the actual um, quill itself. So what we do is just, yeah, as I say, it's a little bit of a bit of elbow grease, really. And when you get to the top end of it, the very fine end, put your finger against it when you when you take the, the actual feathers out. Or the, um, what, what would you call them? <laughs> uh, I suppose the feather part of the quill? Yeah. Okay. So I'm getting there slowly. 
and once I've got right down to the, the quill itself I'll be sanding that off You know, um, I tell you, uh, an angler who done very well with these floats was a guy named um, Mike Stone from down in um, the West Country. I think he's in Ireland now. And Mike, if you're watching, hope you're doing well. <laughs> anyway, um, he was cleaning up uh, on the canals down there using this type of float, um, using the bread punch in conjunction with the bread punch and a, and a whip to hand. I think he, uh, I think. On his, he would actually put in a small little um, body on the bottom, and um, obviously, you know, when he uh, uh, when he fished it, he fished it like you know. I suppose it, with with a body, it would um, make it a bit more buoyant and also uh, stabilise, especially in choppy water. Um, which again, I'll be talking about that at a later date. Uh, the body wagglers, yeah, getting there slowly. Now, start. Use a bit of sandpaper now, a bit of sort of medium coarse will be fine, and then I'll just start to start to kind of sand it. Okay, oh, okay, <laughs> right, you join me now, and uh, I'm almost there, as you can see. All the feathers have come off the quill. Very, uh, I've cut it on the top to create like a, a bit of a point, but as you can see from the shape of that. That could be a very sensitive float and of course when we shot this down to the tip um, the fish when you got to look at it is going to disappear so yeah it's a fabulous uh, very sensitive type of float now um, you can leave it uh, clear and, and, and use it as in a, a natural state um, or you could color it black now I will be coloring these black um, now and I will be uh, paint at the top white uh, leaving that to dry and once I've let that to dry I then put the fluorescent blaze uh, tip to it you could leave it black of course you could paint it black and put little white stripes around it for you know little indications and now on the, the bottom end um, I was I wouldn't call it the business end because that would be the business end but the, the base end um, there's two ways we can do this we can either put an adapter so the line will pass through it, or we can whip an eye on it. Um, I think what I might do, uh, I'll, I'll probably do both in this uh, short video, just to show you the uh, the two types. Now, the question is, a lot of people will ask, um, how do you get the capacity on these? Well, again, through experience, uh, over the few years I've been making these floats, um, I can just roughly guess as a guideline what that would take. Um, my guess that's going to take between three and four BB. Okay, now what I'll do, I'll be, uh, before I paint it and start to um, finish the float off, uh, I will test it for the capacity um, so that um, I'm not wasting my time <laughs> if, I'm at, if I'm trying to make a, a particular float for a particular order for, for that capacity. Um, I, I know I need two, um, number four, uh, two, 4BB floats for this particular customer. Okay, um, right, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to, uh, oh, I forgot about my hair. <laughs> I know I'm going to get it cut soon, but um, obviously the subscribers who are watching, who are watching on a regular basis, uh, that's uh, something you can look forward to. <laughs> Oh, so embarrassing making these videos sometimes. <laughs> All good fun though. Hope you're enjoying them. Right, now, this is how I'm going to uh, find out the capacity of this float. Um, what I've done, I've got a float adapter and I've put some line to it and I've put four BBs on it. Okay, which I'm roughly hoping it's going to take. So, what I'm going to do now, um, I'm going to just, now, I have to wet it first to get the rubber on it. Right, so I guess... Push that on slowly. There you are. Just enough to grip it at the moment. There you are. And that's holding that. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to get my shotting tube, which is a, a long jar. Okay, and I'm going to now, I'll show you, if I lift the camera, show you. Right. I'm going to drop this in. Oh, there you are. That's, 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 yeah, that's 4BB. That's 4BB and it's 
standing proud so yeah okay that's now too i mean you know you can't be as accurate as you can if you're using for example balsa and uh and with plastic because you can actually cut it and keep trimming it but of course with with these type of floats you have to um go with what you've got really so as you can see it's uh it's there suspended in a jar i suppose you know four bbs not far away from it um of course by the time they put it add a few other shots to it uh, which will shot it down to the tip you know that will be a perfect little float then okay okay right i've uh I finished the uh float now by as i mentioned by rubbing it down with a very fine sandpaper um so got a nice tip to it uh, so on the base now we're going to whip the eye now i've got to, i've got to admit that uh, putting an eye on these smooth surfaces is a bit of a problem sometimes because the uh, you can't quite get the cotton to grip onto it so what i do i either put a drop of super glue but of course super glue dries very quickly so at one second it'll dry a bit slower so either a little touch of varnish or a little bit of um, dope uh, which i use for the balsa so i'm just going to dip this in the, into the into the dope so i've just got like a stick so i get like a bit of a sticky surface ready for the cotton okay so i'll just uh, put that to one side a second just let that dry a little bit i'll reach over now to get my eye My little packets of eyes <laughs> um, as i said they're, they're actually like like a safety pin I, and i suppose many years ago people would use the the end of a, of a safety pin so there are see okay so what i'm now going to do now i'm going to probably get a bit of a sticky hands doing this but i'm going to place this on the bottom of in the position where i want to whip the eye so basically there okay and um, i get my cotton now because i'm going to paint it black i'm going to use black cotton so the first thing to do is to form like a loop just to start the whipping off um unlike the balsa or cane where you can actually um put the cotton straight into the into the balsa it's going to be a bit more difficult with these so what you do you place the loop okay like a sliding loop there and then once you once you've once you started it as i say it's a bit fiddly but once you've got it you've got to go in there okay now we're going to start to whip the eye now you don't have to be at this stage too um neat with the whipping as long as it attaches itself to the eye okay. So I started it off now and I'm just starting to whip whip the eye on onto the quill itself. Okay, making sure it's not slipping, it's nice and firm. So I shall keep whipping this now. Now once I've done this, I will try and set it with a bit of super glue to hold it all in position. You have to be very careful at this stage because you don't want the eye to slip there you go so i'm gradually turning the quill and feeding the cotton so it's you know it's not too bad it's a bit of a neat uh whip in this i suppose I suppose it, and the, i suppose the important thing as long as it works that's the main thing it doesn't matter whether it has to be neat or not I mean, obviously, if you were whipping an eye on onto your rod, then you want it to be a bit neater, wouldn't you? But uh, we'll try our best anyway. Okay. Now, once I got to that stage, see if I can get just cut off this little bit of a tag there. If I can. Because it's in the way. So I'll just whip over that slightly. Yeah. I'm keeping the cotton quite tight and i'm using a good quality uh, thread as well by the way not uh, not sewing cotton this is a good quality thick th thick uh, th thread now once i've done that now i need my another piece of cotton which uh, i've in this case I've, I've made it red just so that you can see it 
and I'm going to just place this on the whipping or inside the whipping very slowly just a few times yeah, and what I'll do now just keep on whipping but I won't whip tight I'll whip quite um, slack because the idea is I'm going to put the end of this black cotton back through the, the loop of the red and I'm going to pull that through so it's nice and neat so there you go yeah so I've got it to that so far now so what I'm going to do hold it all together with my thumb cut that bit off put the um the black tail now back through the red loop okay yeah now I'm going to pull the red cotton and that should pull the black through its whipping so in the end you've got a nice neat finish to it and you're hiding if you like the tail end of the cotton just pulling it a bit tight now yeah now I'll trim this off there you go and that's finished as I said I'll just put some super glue on this now and that, sh that should uh, cement it together okay here you got it so just put the super glue now using the nozzle as a an application as an applier so making sure the super glue soaks into the into the cotton as well obviously be very careful with super glue because i tell you what i've had some mishaps with it and glued my fingers together a few times so you know as i say and if you do if you do that super glue on your fingers hot water soap got plenty of soap on it okay so very careful yeah that's about getting there now so yeah i shall let that dry now when that dries that should be quite a nice firm hold to the base of the float yeah so we're getting there <laughs> okay now that's uh, almost dry but um, what I'll do now would save a little bit of time I'll get the white paint and uh, acrylic now what I'm going to do I'm just going to dip the the tip into the acrylic a good inch inch and a half okay now I'm going to let that dry and that will form a nice little coating then ready to put the blaze color on now as I mentioned you could leave it naturally you could leave this croquil uh, naturally as a, a natural float or you can paint it greens or blacks uh, I will be painting this black however if you do leave it natural one thing you have to do and that is to varnish it um, a couple of coats of varnish okay just to seal any uh, porous holes or any cracks in in, um, in the actual quill itself but as long as you're careful with the taking the feathers off um, you should be okay you shouldn't split it and you shouldn't crack it okay so there we are so I'm going to leave this dry now for um, an hour or two and then I'm going to come back um, and uh, paint the body and then put the colour on the, on the top. Okay, right. Um, i just show you how to whip the uh, eye on to the, uh, the crow quill. Now here's another way, it's a lot quicker way um, and I suppose it's just as, uh, as good and that is with it, just an ordinary, ordinary um, a silicone adapter um, and all you have to do is to basically uh, press it onto the bottom end of the quill <laughs> and hence you've got your adapter however that could come off so what I like to do is always um, put a little bit of super glue so it, it cements it together so I'm going to do put a bit of super glue on there now just a little drop and while it's still wet while it's still wet I'm going to slide this mind your fingers again of course and slide this right up as far as I can up the quill. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry now. As you can see, that's gonna cement it. Now there you are. That's a lot easier, a lot of quicker way to do it. You you could obviously whip uh, whip that on as well, which gives it a little bit of extra um, uh, you know security, but. Uh, that's that's as good as anything and it's a lot quicker than whipping it so there you are so anybody who's um you know got some who wants to make a few of these that's another way of doing it uh, 
I've already painted that white there, so there you are. So I've got I've got two on the go. Okay, so this one obviously I'll be I'll be painting black as well in a minute, so uh, good. Hi, okay. Um I've let the uh floats dry now, the white the white tips. So what I'm gonna do, um I'll be painting the uh the bodies first. I think that'll be the next stage. So what we do is start on the top uh, using my special paint which uh, I'll be divulging in the new series of Patreon videos. There you are. And so I'm just gradually making nice little steady strokes making the paint nice and even um, so as it goes down the stem right down to the end and uh, yeah and this is doing two things not only is it coloring it but it's actually helping to seal any uh, cracks or any um, there should be any cracks in it but you know you never know um, sometimes when you take the feathers off it does tend to make little cracks sometimes so yeah that's right down the bottom now I'm going to do I'm going to reverse that second and I'm just going to just paint that bit there just over the edge of the whoop, helping to create the seal so I got the uh, uneven uh, There you are, there's the first one. I shall hang this up by by uh, upside down with a pin. Okay, so I use a long bit of pin through the hole in the adapter. Like that. And I'll be hanging that put into my flower arranging pad like that I'll hang that upside down let it dry okay same with the other one start it on the top trying to create a straight line if I can there you are I'll proceed to paint down nice and thick the paint so when it dries it'll create a nice coating I think I prefer natural myself but you know some people's uh, prefer having a colored float so I think I might have mentioned before about white floats um, blending in with the sky which is uh, always a good idea and uh, Painting floats uh, white also. Um, it's a little bit of a psychology thing, but each time you reel your float in, in the corner of the eye, it catches the other angler and they think you've got a fish on. <laughs> so sometimes it, it, they, you know, uh, they destroy their, their sort of concentrate a little bit, so it gives you a little bit of an advantage. <laughs> so that'll tip that, but don't tell too many people. <laughs> uh, you got to laugh, haven't you? You got it. Yeah, so that's the other one finished. Anyway, talking about psychology with fishing, there's some uh, great stories. I've uh, got to tell you this one. Um, many years ago, when I was a youngster, I was mixing some ground bait on this uh, on the river it was, and uh, it was a bit windy at the time, and I never get Jerry Bailey. Don't know whatever happened to Jerry, but uh, he was like a senior wrangler, and I was just a junior. And anyway, I mixed up the ground bait on the bank, and um, anyway, uh, I started throwing little knobs of this ground bait in, and of course, the um, the wind caught the, uh, the the ground because it was a bit dry, you know, and it sort of went in the air. And um, at the same time, I shouted out to Jerry, I, I said, "Are you doing, Jerry?" And as he turned round, some of the, the 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 dry ground bait just flew downstream and went in his eyes. <laughs> well. He turned around, he said, hey, you know, you son, you climb, he said, I've heard of some tricks, he said, uh, uh, um, some tactics and fish, he said, but that's 
beats it all. <laughs> I'll never forget. Poor old Jerry. He was a good angler, old Jerry. Um, from the Midlands. Don't know what ever happened to him. Uh, anyway, I've got to tell you another story about the... Um, uh, about feeding. I remember uh, a friend of mine, Ken Orsi, another one who don't fish anymore. Um, but he, he was obsessed uh, about the feeding, you know, he'd only put a couple of uh, um, half a dozen maggots or casters in and if you ever knew Ken, uh, he was successful, he won matches everywhere, he went, went on the Bristol Haven and he'd win a match using like about a quarter of a pint of maggots or casters. <laughs> it's as though he, you know, he just didn't believe in feeding. Anyway, but I could always beat Ken, always beat him on the next peg because I would get my catapult and I would feed, and I'd be feeding nothing in the nothing in the pouch. But he'd think I was feeding all the time. Of course, he used to put him off, and uh, you know, uh, uh, okay, I don't know whatever happened to him. But uh, that's another tactic as well. <laughs> Psychology, you know, you fight all the, uh, you think the the anger next year, you find all this bait, and so they start feeding it. Next thing, <laughs> they've overfed their fish. <laughs> oh, anyway, keep that to yourself. Don't tell anyone. Okay, you just caught me now as I'm mixing my uh, fluorescent uh, tips, blaze. So now they've dried. I shall, I shall get the pin out. <laughs> right, now, um, as, I, as I probably mentioned in a previous video, uh, the special paint for the tips. It's the best way, it's the best um, fluorescent colour you can get. Uh, and it does stand out, you know. If you haven't seen my previous videos, then go back and have a look. Otherwise, I will be showing more in depth in my Patreon pages, um, YouTubes, when they come out. There you go. Looking good. Just a little bit of hair on the top. <laughs> So sensitive, these floats. Absolutely brilliant. As I say, there's a special uh, way of putting put in, um, or mixing this paint to make it work well. Um, you don't want it too runny and you don't want it too thick. That's about perfect there, look. Yeah, now when that dries, that will be like a, a bright beacon light. You'll be able to see it almost on any background. There you are, there's the float almost made. All I need to do now is to put the capacity on the side, write it down with our uh, pen. <laughs> I should do that now. Okay. My next job then is to varnish them, of course. Because when I varnish them, it'll uh, finish them off and um, they look absolutely lovely when they're finished. There you are. Easy to make. Um, all you need to do is to acquire the, uh, the quill itself. Again, I'll be going in, into that into more detail in my Patreon pages. But... Uh, you know, actually, you can get, you can make these from nothing. Just go over the local pack and find a couple of quills, and you can make these floats dead easy. Anyway, hope you enjoyed watching. Um, I'm going to vanish over them. We don't want to see that. You've seen that before. <laughs> um, and I'm going to let them dry, and then I'll be shipping them out. Anyway, hope uh, hope you've liked uh, what you saw on these uh, and the previous videos. And if you do like them, share and subscribe. Because the more subscribers I get, the better for me. Okay.
Tight lines.